Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us the good news that if we are faithful to you, we are going to receive the power of your Holy Spirit in our life. Oh, Father, give us that power so we can reveal thy character to the world, that we can teach thy word with authority and the people can see in us that we are instruments from heaven into this perishing world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, in the last program, yes. I kind of, in my conclusion, I said that the shining, so mm -hmm. to speak, of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is not going to be literal in, in a sense in our faces, mm -hmm. but off the air, both of you were sharing with me, and I want to bring this openly to my brethren and friends out there. If we recall the case of Stephen. Yes, in Acts chapter 6, verse 15. Okay, can you read that? Because, because I, I, I'm just sharing with you this because yes, indeed, people must see in God's people in this end time a difference. Mm -hmm. a, 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 can this, we are able to distinguish? Now, this is talking about Stephen. Yeah. And how he was brought before, he was going to be taken before the Sanhedrin. He was standing before the Sanhedrin. Yeah. And the Bible says here, I'll start 14 for emphasis. It says, mm -hmm. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered, unto, delivered us. Mm -hmm. And all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been an, a face of an angel. Now, it's talking about his face aspect, and it's, but it's also getting the aspect that his face was shining like an angel as well. This mm. is the, so, the other aspect of it. So, so, and then also on the book of Matthew 17, we mentioned it, we mentioned it in the previous program, when Peter, John, uh, mm -hmm. John, Peter, and James, mm -hmm. they were there with the Jesus, and, and they saw a transfiguration on the mm -hmm. face of Jesus, right? That's right. And, it's like and Jesus even the face. disciple, when uh -huh. they came down. That's right. They now, now, but one of the main things that people are going to notice is that there will be a, a group of people in this end time that will be speaking mm -hmm. according to the Word of God, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. They'll be, they'll be living according to the Word of God even the dress reform, the food, the, everything in their life are going to be sh sh showing to the people that are different, mm -hmm. different from the rest of the people. Right. Not to gain salvation, but no, no, not to obtain salvation, but because by God's grace, they already are being saved by His grace, by faith. Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to read two verses also about the light Lightening the world. Okay. Second Peter 1 verse 19 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then link that with Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light. What, okay. And then remember. Meaning what? Mm -hmm. well, well, the word of God the is the of, light. The word well, of God is. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. One of, yeah. Psalms 119, 105. Yeah. It says that the, the word is the light. Unto so, my feet. So, the light unto my path. Yeah. So what is going to be seen in each one of those men and women that are getting ready to be translated? They'll be speaking again according to what? 
The word of God. The word. They'll be conducting themselves themselves yeah. according to what? The word of God. The word of God and his law. Because the right. law is a lamp, right. a light. Right. Commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. And Proverbs, thy word right. is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. So is the word and the law combined with character mm -hmm. that's going to shine. Mm -hmm. That's going to brighten. That's going to lighten the earth. It's going to be glory. seen. That's right. It's going to be seen because you got to remember what did God say was light? Mm -hmm. Psalms 119, 105. That word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 6, 23. The commandment is a lamp. The law is a light. Then yeah, the Bible turns back. We also have a motion word of prophecy. Did we do well? Did take heed as a light to shine into a dark place? Mm -hmm. So light is prophecy. Light is the word. Light is Jesus' character. Amen. So this is what we get. And the light is the law of God. So now we see light shining. This is what we, we're, not, we're not looking for just a little sunlight or moonlight or starlight. We're talking about spiritual light, light. spiritual light that's going to be shining in the midst of darkness and gross darkness. Mm. And this is what's going to be illuminating the earth with God's glory. That's the movement that is being described of Revelation 18. Yes, my brother. First John 1 verse 7 says, 1 John 1 verse 5, no, 7, yeah. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And this shows that Jesus is the head of the church, but his church is his body. And so when the angel comes down, it not only represents Christ, it does represent the church. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We're helping him to enlighten the whole earth with his glory. In Daniel 12, 10, go to read Daniel. Somebody read Daniel 12, 10. And let's see what the Bible says happens when people are witnessing and sharing the gospel and people are actually being converted and turning to righteousness. Let's see what's going to happen. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but mm -hmm. the wise shall understand. Mm -hmm. Now, they, okay, the wise shall understand, but go, go to Daniel, where it says, yeah. Daniel 12, 3. Right, right. And they that be wise shall shine mm -hmm. as the brightness of the firmament. They that be what? Wise. What, calls, what, what makes you wise? The fear of the wow. Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Praise Turn from Lord. evil. Uh-huh. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So people who once who used did not keep the commandments of God, which is also called righteousness, who did not have the character of Christ, but who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and also take on his character through the help of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit, and then bear witness for Jesus by being obedient to his commandments, mm -hmm. the Bible said they shall shine as the brightness of the firmament mm -hmm. and as the stars forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. Yeah, but that verse, let's go, let's go back again to Daniel 12, 10. Yes. We'll read it again mm -hmm. slowly, slowly, right. so we can digest it by the power of the Holy Spirit over here. Let's go. Yes. Go but many? Many shall be, shall be purified. Okay, who, who are those many that will be purified? Purified by what? They're going to be purified by the, by the power of Christ's righteousness oh, and by his blood. And the Holy Spirit the Holy coming Ghost, in the light. The Holy Ghost, right. Because Jesus promised That's right. to giving us it's His only, church, the it's, Holy it's Spirit. It's only through purification that you can have sanctification. Right. You can't okay. have sanctification and, not, and, be in, and have impure minds, and okay. impure and, hearts. And those that will receive or, or walking in the light, the Word of God, mm -hmm. the commandments of God, walking with Jesus, mm -hmm. they will be purified, purified and made white. Made purified white from sin. And dried. Now, what's, what does made white mean? White represents purity. We know that in Daniel 12, 2. Mm -hmm. All right? They purified and made white. Wait a minute. But white is also a symbol of righteousness. Yes. And they have a different character. So watch this. So what's the major theme that's going to be shining to the world with Revelation 18 at the time when sun worship mm -hmm. is exalted God's people are to go proclaim the Sabbath Why? openly. <laughs> openly, those who keep the Sabbath, and they're going to be not just Adventists proclaiming the Sabbath. Amen. You got Seventh Day Baptists, you got Seventh Day Pentecostals, Pentecostals and others right. who are faithfully keeping the Sabbath, right? Who are honoring God's true Sabbath day. And let me tell you, and, and wait, God wait, said, wait. Jesus, I have sheep that are not of this fold. And let me tell you, many. Right. Let me say this before you, and many of our good Catholic friends are going to go openly. Do you know how, how did I know that? Because of you. <laughs> no. no. Your By experience. God's glory, Your I was one of them. Yeah. You know, uh, as we said all the time in this program, we, we are being offered in the free book that I put together yeah. about my testimony. Well, you watch it every program. 
uh, the offering that we do. In Revelation 18, 4, that we haven't got there yet, it gives us the promise, a calling, a solemn calling. So let me say this, with all the respect to my seventh Adventist believers, brethren, most people that are going to end up finishing this work are not seventh day Adventist believers. Do you know that, my brother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you, do you yes. know that, my brother Patrick? Mm -hmm. How do you mean that? How did I know that? Yeah. Because Jesus said that the calling, uh, uh, yeah, he'll call many, but only few are going to be me chosen. Far, but few are chosen. But how did I know that too? Because in the book of Revelation 18.4, God is calling from Babylon. Yeah. So from Babylon, mm. not from Seventh-day Adventism, from Babylon, his people. And those people are going to come out mm. and give the finishing touch of the work that Jesus is going to finish That's what happened. in righteousness. That's what and we have been told, I, I'm not ashamed to say. Mm -hmm. You say, how did I know that? I'm not ashamed to say. We have a messenger that mm -hmm. uh, we, we hardly bring into this program, because we don't want anybody to be prejudiced, saying, oh, I'm not going to listen to the voice of the eternal gospel, because they just talk about this lady, Ellen G. White. I hardly mention her name, but we got, let me bring, let me bring this to, to all of you there. We have a messenger, yes, as Revelation 12, 17 described, mm -hmm. the That's remnant right. was going to have the spirit of prophecy. And she said many times that the majority of the people who are being given the message of the seventh day Sabbath, they've been teaching it even. Many, many even preach, preaching about mm -hmm. they're not going to be saved because they were not sanctified. Right, so not sanctified. That's they were the, not sanctified. That, that's that's they the key. Did, they did not allow the, the power of the Holy Spirit to come into their life. That's right. So she said that the majority, this, the 11, and she mm -hmm. called it mm -hmm. the 11 hour worker. Mm -hmm. are going to be com com uh, uh, um, uh, made mainly by those men and women that Jesus, uh, they the received call, the, the call, uh -huh. they came out of Babylon, mm -hmm. and they came in to the front line. She said, That's right. what, what does it mean to come to the front line? Me, those people, to the evangelicals to the and forefront. Catholics, yes. are going to come in the front line and bring this, Finish this in fact, message. In fact, they're going to take the place of some of God's people today. Okay, the some front them, line. Some, some, some who are now proclaiming a message, but who are not sanctified so, to the message. For so you are going to see uh, not, not only mm -hmm. little people like me, but other, you know, priests, evangelical coming to you through program like this, openly preaching these messages that Jesus is being describing according to Revelation 18. This is good news. I, I get excited when I Amen. read about this Amen. or talk about this. You know why? Because we are not the only ones. Mm -hmm. God has a complete army. As a matter of fact, how big is going to be? I I'm going to bring it right back. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Watch this. This is important too. I'll be right back. Hi, friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, we want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150-page book will give you insights into why God is calling men and women out of Babylon. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why seven? Because the seventh day is a Sabbath. Why seven? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why seven? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now, from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all.
Welcome back. Welcome back. My brother Patrick, do you have a statement in there yeah. that you want to share with our, our audience? This is from Great Controversy, page 608. Yeah. Oh, May I say something before yeah. you read it? I bring this point to all of you because I, I know there is a charge or there is an accusation which is not right. Unknowingly, maybe, many people, and maybe it is because the way we make our presentations, I have heard good people saying the problem that I got with you, talking about us, that you think, you believe, Adventists teach that only you are going to be safe. No. And, and no, it's the opposite. And, and that's the only reason I'm bringing this point. It's quite the opposite. So if you are, have been one of those that believe that, that Seventh-day Adventist believers think that only them are going to be safe, listen carefully what we're going to read. Do you have it, Brother Patrick? Read it, please. And we give the source. Yeah, go ahead. Great Controversy, page 608. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message. So those are seven Adventist believers. Yeah. Okay. But have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, mm -hmm. abandon their position mm -hmm. of truth, okay. and join the ranks of the opposition. Mm. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. Mm -hmm. and when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. Mm -hmm. Men of talent and pleasing address mm -hmm. who once rejoiced in the truth, employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. They become the most bitter enemies of their former brethren. Now, let's make a pause. Notice this. They abandon not buildings, not institutions. They say, uh, talk about the, I'm talking, describing over there, the, the seven Adventist believers, okay? Mm -hmm. Those who, who are believe and teach on the three angels' messages, okay? Now, when they see storm, opposition coming, when the Sunday National Sunday Law will come, and they will be prohibited to buy and sell. They say, wait a minute. I need to feed my family. Or oh, even before that. Even before that. Even before that. Yeah. I, 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 need, I need to work. It happened in Christ's day. Right. Just to give a biblical, because remember he fed the 5,000, then yeah. they wanted to make him king. Right. So they stormed the capital. I mean, they... Um, uh, they wanted to make him king, and right. he sent them away, and right. they all left him, right. becoming his worst enemies. Uh, you're talking about chapter 6 John, of chapter John, chapter 6, yeah. uh, 60 and on. Yes. History repeats. Yeah. But further on, the same messenger, and, and in the Bible, Jesus spoke about this. He told the leaders of his days, those who thought that they were the only one that would be saved, but they were, they were about to crucify Jesus. He said, you know what? The publicans and the uh, people from the world, from the street, are going in front of you to the kingdom. Hmm. That's going to be repeated. She speaks very clearly that the one, the Jesus, that will hear the voice this end time. Hmm. That's why I said before, let me repeat. I mean, we haven't seen nothing yet. We, we will see, like in the, when this movement started in the 1844, according to the prophecy of Revelation 14, okay, in 18, that we're about, that we want to expand in here, people, even priests, Methodists, even, even, even uh, Jewish people, they unite to this movement and, and, it was expanded through the world. Now, at the end of this work now, the book of Revelation 18 is bringing to us the good news that how it's going to finish 10 times greater than it started. So yes, we're just preparing the foundation, so to speak. And she'll go on and say that many of those men and women out there, Revelation 18.4, can you read it for me, please? Oh, Corey. Nice. You got it. I, I, saw, I heard another voice from right. heaven saying, Come out of my people, 
uh, that she may not partake of her sins, she not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. When is that message going to be heard? Before probation closes, the time of grace will close, or during the time is still grace to come in? It's before. After me, before. Because mm -hmm. why then but Jesus is making a calling. No. Once, through once, whom is Jesus going to do the calling? He's going to do it through his people. His people. We've been talking about that, right? Yeah. right. This is message really is being given now. I mean, I mean, I mean. And it's being given by those who have separated from corporate sin. Uh, because you can't call people out of corporate sin. I can stay there. And be in corporate sin yourself. Yeah. You have to be in a position. And the three angels' messages is that position. Right. You stand on the three angels' messages, calling people out of their personal sins with the everlasting gospel and then corporate sin. Second, second angel's message. The message. second angel's message. Right. And stand clothed with Christ's righteousness, ready for his coming. That's right. Now, when you say, and I know here comes a topic, a very touchy, very touchy, very hard topic to explain. What you read before in the book, Great Controversy, they will be abandoned their position. In Spanish, they say, they abandoned the faith. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to this. They can remain in the same buildings, same places where they come and worship. And the best example that we find is when the Jewish people, the leadership, yeah. they remain in the temple, they retained their leadership positions. People saw in them as agents of heaven. But Jesus said, this house Nobody is being doesn't. left desolate. That's right. Did the disciple understood that? Did the people understood that when Jesus said that? No. No. In fact, uh, that's why we talked about the abomination of desolation. Mm -hmm. Because as Sunday is exalted, they will enforce Sunday mm. by rigorous measures mm. to keep it holy. They're going to seek to make a day holy that has not been sanctified by God as holy. Mm. And in Luke chapter 17, mm -hmm. verse 20, the Bible tells you this right here. Okay. It says here, when ye therefore shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation is nigh. Mm -hmm. Notice that the desolation was brought on by armies. The abomination mm -hmm. was the idolatrous standard of the Romans. Mm -hmm. But the Romans came with their armies and surrounded Jerusalem. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see the same thing happening in the end time. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the armies of the world, in this case, armies of Rome, mm -hmm. that's going to be connected with the, the, the political powers and religious powers of earth, surround God's people, setting up the standard of Sunday observance so this time as their... As, as, the, as, as the sign for their worship, but at the same time a sign for God's people to know that the desolation is coming. So not pagan Rome, but no, ob pa obviously we're gonna, we're religious see, we're see from Rome. From a spiritual now, standpoint, we're going to see papal Rome. Okay, papal Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. And this is, this is the question. Is the sign happening? Because remember, in order, for the, in order for the Romans to surround Jerusalem, they had to be unified. The soldiery of the Roman armies had to be unified. But huh? this will be a unity by force. This will be a unity a by unit. force, right? But at the same time, what, was, there, was there a unity? Yes. Was there a surrounding? Yes, it was. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of the fact that if we watch this very carefully, is there a unity taking place today in the world? Is world religions coming together? Is the global poli political systems coming together? Mm -hmm. And, and is, it is, not Roman, is not the Roman pontiff calling for unity and for a world global governance? Can I ask some other question too? Mm -hmm. Rhetorical question? Just to think. Have we seen religious people trying to unite with secular power? Yes. Have we seen that? Have yes. we seen trying to put by force using um, using the quote unquote religious <laughs> belief, thinking that because I'm I got pre Christian principles, mm -hmm. I want to see impose this, and I want to see by force, by force, mm -hmm. using the force like in the past. 
-hmm. to implement the people that I think that will establish my religious principle, my religious belief. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful with all this. That's right. We have to be very careful because Satan is so astute. Remember, we, we have brought in previous program that many people thinking that they're doing a good work for God. Okay? Mm -hmm. One thing that we need to pay attention is never ever in the history of mankind in the Bible you will find no prophet, no, Jesus didn't do it, the disciples didn't do it, tried to use the secular power to establish their belief. Mm -hmm. Never, ever. So we have to be careful. This is what the Bible called fornication. Spiritual fornication. Spiritual. Mm -hmm. It can be from evangelicals. It can be from Catholics. It can be even from Adventists if they do that, try to do that. Mm -hmm. it, 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 Jesus said to the Caesar what is to the Caesar and to God what is of God. Yes, Brother Patrick. Uh, Paul talks about how he had a, uh, brought the church to be espoused to one husband, Jesus Christ. Amen. The church really? should be married to Christ. Uh, read it. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Amen. And so it's not to a Caesar. No. Not to a political man. No. Not to a president. Not even See, to, not one even of the to, things, not uh, one, a, not I, I need to close, I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead. I, I, will, will, I, I tell you what, let, right. let me make another promise. In the next program, we're going to expand into this thought. But we have to be careful, my friends. No religious movement will be accepted by, by God when they are trying to impose by a political leader or a political movement. No, we need to be adhered as God's church to the husband, which is Jesus Christ. May he be the leader of our life. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.